everyone, my name is Kyle, and today I wanted to go over my latest build, my 1977 Harley Davidson Shovelhead. This bike is a personal bike of mine, and it's pretty special to me. It's actually the first Harley that I've ever built. I'll be the first one to tell you that it was a pain in the ass. Today I wanted to talk about some of the custom stuff I did, some of the parts I used, and some of the struggles that I had while building this bike. If that's something that you're into, stick around and let's get into it. So even before the cafe racer stuff, I've always been interested in Harleys. I remember as a kid looking on the internet through pages and pages of chopper stuff, but the problem was I couldn't afford it at the time. Harleys are expensive. The metric stuff just makes a little more sense for someone who's just starting out. My desire to get started building bikes was overcame pretty quickly once I saw the price of some old shovel heads or pan heads on the internet. This bike in particular was very inspired by the 60s and 70s. The choppers of that time pretty much had a soul of their own and they're just cool. They, they spoke to me in some way and the guys who were riding them during the 60s and 70s were definitely some of the most badass dudes to ever do it. They ride thousands of miles across the country, pretty much camp wherever they stopped. The first thing I did right when I got the bike was tear it down to the frame. I found out pretty quickly that Harley utilizes a bunch of special tools that I had to buy and that was a big surprise to me. Things like gear pullers, line reamers, special sockets for the sprocket, a pinion shaft socket, those are all tools that you have to buy if you want to be able to work on a Harley. After I stripped the bike down to the frame, I sent the frame out to RUV, who's a well-known chopper fabricator down in San Diego. For something like that, it's better to send it out to a specialist because the last thing you want to do is weld on a hardtail and have it be crooked, and then all of a sudden you're going sideways down the road. And that's something I just didn't want to take on. So I let Ari take care of it, and he did a great job. We did a replica pan head rear end, so it has the replica pan head axle plates, and it was pretty period correct for that time. Once the bike was hardtailed, it was time to move on to the wheels. The rear wheel was actually a mag 16 inch wheel from the factory. I switched that to an 18 inch spoked wheel. It's running the star hub. The star hub allows me to run a juice drum, which is also another period correct part. And a juice drum is basically a hydraulic drum brake. Cool thing about juice drums is that they look good. The downside to a juice drum is that it's like a light switch. So once you hit the brake pedal, you have about a 50-50 chance of that rear wheel locking up. And there's a fine line between smooth braking and just skidding 100 feet down the road. The rear fender is a reproduction five inch wassail fender. So it's got the rib down the center. And I tied everything together with a custom stainless steel sissy bar that I made right here in this garage. The sissy bar has a prism brake light and license plate mount. I also use this single wire setup for the rear brake so that it just makes everything clean. If you want me to do a video on how I make a single wire brake light using diodes, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll make that video. It's pretty easy and it cleans everything up really nice. Moving on to the seat. The seat actually came from a guy in Canada. Uh, his company's name is BNC Cycles. He does amazing work. I pretty much told him what I wanted and he delivered. It cost me quite a bit of money, but the fit and finish of the product is unbelievable and he does an amazing job. Uh, I wanted a leather seat with some brass insets and a diamond pattern. So if you're in the market for a seat, I would definitely reach out to him. He does amazing work. I'll probably use him again. I wanted the seat to mount without any mounting hardware showing and there was only one option for that. I had to utilize the seat post hole in the frame and machine my own little mount so that none of the mounting is seen and it just makes for a more polished and cleaner looking uh, way to mount the seat. The oil tank was probably one of the most frustrating parts of this build. I'm using a reproduction pan head horseshoe oil tank and even though it's a pan head replica rear end that doesn't mean that it just bolts right up. The problem I was having is that the transmission and the clutch arm were interfering with the bottom of the tank. Typically on those tanks there's a battery tray that bolts to the bottom and holds the battery in but there was just no way around it. I had to make my own battery tray so that the battery sat higher up towards the seat and that I could have some clearance for the clutch arm. Like with all my builds, complete top to bottom engine rebuild. That means the lower bearings, the push rods, the connecting rods of the crank was balanced, all the seals and gaskets replaced, new cam, new lifters, 
everything. Everything that I could replace on this bike, oil pump, was all replaced. The reason I do that is if I'm gonna be putting a lot of money into the bike, I at least want the engine to be solid for 10 or plus more years. Same thing with the transmission, top to bottom. I went through everything, replaced all the seals, all the bushings, all the gaskets. Um, there were some retainers in there that were replaced. The ultimate goal is to not have the thing leak. Harleys are notorious for leaking. And when the bike was finished, I was well aware of some of the fittings that I didn't take care of. They started to leak. One of the most frustrating things with these Harleys is that there's really no middle ground for decent parts. It's either you have the cheap options, which are the overseas parts, which I'm sure you know the name of those companies, and then you have the high-end stuff. And the cheap stuff's cheap for a reason. It primarily doesn't work, and I spent a lot of money on parts that pretty much were unusable. The more expensive parts are definitely the way to go when you're building a Harley because it's not even worth messing around and, and trying to make the cheap stuff work. The gas tank is a reproduction Wassel gas tank from Lowbrow Customs. Um, it's a great quality tank and they pressure test them and there's really nothing wrong with them. I went with the mid-tunnel version of it so that I had enough clearance to put a fitting in there uh, where the pecock would go. The, the issue I did have was that that clearance between the rocker arm and the gas tank is pretty slim. So the options of petcocks that you can use are, are pretty limited. I ended up using a fitting that was 45 degrees with an inline petcock and that pretty much solved my problem. As for the paint, I went with a super jet black and I also threw in some metallic gold flames that really only come out in the sunlight. Uh, it just adds a little bit of flair to the tank and it's a chopper, so it gets flames. On to the foot controls. The, the foot controls I kept going back and forth on. It was kind of frustrating to find a bolt up solution for mid controls. Um, Harley did make an OEM mid control break for the shovel head that mounted directly to the transmission. The problem is, is if you're not running the stock primary on the left side, then you can't run their mid control for the shifter. That would mean that I would have to fabricate my own and create a linkage and do all this other stuff that I just really didn't want to put the time into. I ended up going with some forward controls. I bought a slingshot brake from Prism Supply Co. and that's what my brake setup is. On the shifter side, I mounted my own foot peg mounts and then used the stock shifter on an OEM Harley and this seems to be working pretty well. The front end is off an 80s Sportster and the lower legs were shaved of all the brake tabs. This just makes it a little bit cleaner and then they were polished. The fork legs themselves are stock length. I didn't want the bike to be too high in the front because the higher you go, the more knifey it gets in the corners and I still wanted to be able to ride this thing around. It's got a custom set of narrow aluminum triple clamps um, that look pretty cool. I actually found them off a seller on eBay and they were pretty good quality for the price that I paid. But yeah, the, the whole idea with the front end was to keep it simple and clean and functional. The front wheel is a 21 inch spool wheel and it has a Avon Speedmaster for the tire. That's a pretty popular chopper front tire. Um, I thought so as well, so I used it. Up top is a set of eight inch mini ape handlebars. I'm not so sure on these bars. I, I keep going back and forth and probably will be looking at different options in the future. For now, they're comfortable, they work, and I think they look okay. At the end of the day, I built this bike to ride. I definitely want to go on some long road trips with some buddies and camp, and I definitely took that into consideration when I was building this bike. If there's any advice I can give you, it, it's to buy the service manual, get a hard copy of it, and read that thing like the Bible. Um, there's a lot of good info in there. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe and like, and until next time, see ya.